Hey y'all, Indy here from the Conscious Club Podcast, the number one podcast on Wolfpack this week. We're talking Joey Dasik. That's right. 32-33, baby. Magic Gang Kareem, the game winner himself. He's not in studio, but we're talking about him here on the Conscious Club Podcast. All right. All my people in the room, I know what I know you know what to do when I say. Oh, I've been thinking about you, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. I've been thinking about you, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Don't know what you're thinking about any other day. When you keep on running away, anytime you think about her, <laughs> the feelings they. a deep dive into the goodest boy right. Joey Dasek. It is a deep dive, but also it is the Conscious Club podcast. Um, yes, it, it is. is the number one Wolfpack podcast. Uh, we beat out every other competitor <laughs> to the, to the Wolf, <laughs> Wolfpack podcasting uh, uh, sphere. Uh, um, so, you know, at least we can we can stand on that hill pretty tall. Um, <laughs> yes, this is uh, the Conscious Club podcast, the number one podcast on Wolfpack. Yep. We are in zone two. We are. It is another week. Uh, we're coming to you, bringing you Wolf content. We're here to learn on about Wolfpack. Daily. On the daily. Well, weekly. On our Instagram. On um, the daily. Oh yeah, on the daily, on the Instagram, on the weekly, on the Instas. Um, <laughs> on the YouTube. And you, on the YouTubes. Um, yeah, on the YouTubes. Um, but yes, we are not experts in Wolfpack. We love no. Wolfpack. Uh, we just want to learn everything we can about them because uh, much like uh, heroin and cocaine <laughs> and uh, and methamphetamines, you also have funk. 
And so, that is also a drug. Right. It is more of a drug than not. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would think so. Um, yes, welcome to the show. Welcome. Um, I am joined here by my uh, by my host, the host today, the host today, uh, Miss uh, Tori. Yes, and um, her Instagram is at Senorita Toria. Mm-hmm. A little confusing, but you'll get there. Um, I love how I say that every week. Every week, yeah, but you pronounce um, it perfectly fine. Senorita Toria, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, So follow her. She has some great viz dev. Uh, She's a great artist. She's uh, an aspiring viz dev artist. So uh, yeah, if you need, if you need the, uh, if you need the, uh, the the magic, (laughs) the magic, hire her if you want a viz dev artist. (laughs) uh, Welcome to the show, guys. Um, Also, yeah, uh, our Instagram is at the Conscious Club Podcast. Also, Mm -hmm. if you have anything to tell us, either in uh, hit us up in the comment section, or you can email us directly Mm -hmm. at uh, tccp direct at gmail dot com. Tccp direct at gmail dot com. Send us um, perhaps show ideas, segment Mm -hmm. ideas, clips, uh, or why don't you record yourself uh, on your voice memo? Um, and we can put it on the show, you know, something that we get wrong, something that, or video. Uh, or video, voice memo, video, anything you want. Uh, we might just feature it on the show if we deem it, uh, relevant enough. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> um, and that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, early pitch for a new podcast coming mm-hmm. out called relevant enough with Jabron <laughs> Rubio and Indy Fawcett. So stay tuned for that non-Wolf related. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this week it is the goodest boy. The goodest boy. Joey Dosick. So let's jump into it. So um, I start all of these um, deep dives with a quick bio. So Joey was actually born in L.A. And um, he has played. He one of his first groups that he played in was called the Henry Grimes Group in 2003 and 2004. Huh. Alongside, I think it's probably either brothers or a brother and a sister, Nels Klein. Don't, mm-hmm. Not confused with Nelson, Nels Klein and Alex Klein and Vinny Gowala and among others while still in high school. Golia. 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 And that was his first group in high school. Aw. Yeah. And then he left to pursue uh, a degree in college in jazz and contemplative studies at the mm. University of Michigan. Is it contemplative or contemplative? Contemplative. That's how I pronounce it, but it, it's probably contemplative. Contemplative. Con- contemplative. Maybe. I, yeah, yeah, you think you can go both ways on there? Yeah. But contemplative, I think. Yeah, studies. Yeah. At the University of Michigan during this time in Ann Arbor, he played saxophone on a track for Build an Arc <laughs> in 2007 on their LP Dawn and then joined an Afrobeat fusion group, Nomo, for their 2008 release, Ghost Rock. Now, this group, Nomo, is so interesting to me. Is it similar to our meme? Of Theo no Katzman, mo. when you when you realize you ain't the uh, the, the front man no mo. <laughs> this group, I must say, is is so um, artsy and so interesting. Uh, um, we're gonna dive into it here. No mo. Um, this is this is the uh, album he played on here. Oh, is this is this the? Uh the, the musician she was playing with in the Instagram video where he's like playing Afro beats. Could be. Yeah. He could have the, joined them on the their marimba. trip. He's like playing a marimba member. Yeah. Maybe he joined them on his trip. Yeah. And this is copywritten. So, is it really? Uh, yes, it is. So, Oops. well, uh, that's fine. We got a little taste of it. Hopefully, we won't uh, get doxxed. If Do- so, we donked. can cut some of it out, maybe? Yeah, no, it's Okay, fine. cool. Um, but Nomo, super cool. Um, artsy AF, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's for Yeah, sure. they have a bunch of records. If you want to listen to them, it's like um, Afro-Caribbean um, beats, and it's uh, really interesting, and you can listen to all of their stuff on YouTube and probably Apple Music. So, um, Cool. Yeah, he played with them in 2008 for a little bit. And I made a note that it's very Jason Lee Brunzy. It reminded me of him. It is very Jason Lee Brunzy. Yeah, That's great. He loves like um, African and Spanish instruments. Speaking so. of Jason Lee Bruns, 
Um, I I had the luxury of of, <laughs> luxury. of helping out at one of his shows last night. Mm-hmm. It was his fortieth and a fortieth uh, uh, birthday party anniversary where he. Uh, <laughs> He held a show at the Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood, and I was uh, lucky enough to be his merch guy, his PA, general PA, setting up for the band, setting up the bandstand, setting up the merch table, mm-hmm. all that, all that good stuff. But I also uh, later on in the evening got a lucky um, uh, opportunity to eat dinner with him and mm-hmm. his friend, who happens to be a doctor in uh, trumpet. Um, mm-hmm. uh, he said he's he's a doctor doctoral. He has a doctoral degree in mm-hmm. uh, jazz trumpet, which is super <laughs> cool to sit among uh, incredible, um, uh, cali- or, co- yeah, co- like just in like, <laughs> like they have um, caliber that's mm-hmm. undeniable because they have degrees, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, in this stuff. And it's super cool to like get get their um, takes on things. Like mm-hmm. I, I started talking about Purdy and Steve Gadd mm-hmm. to uh, to. Um, Jason Lee Bruns because he's you know he's a he's a drummer mm-hmm. and I, I thought I'd get some brownie points like you know name dropping those mm-hmm. two guys, um, and he said he met Purdy. Really? He, yeah. No. Yeah. Jason Lee Bruns had met Purdy at a um, at a at a, 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 a music. Um, I forgot exactly which festival it was, but it was a or, or like similar to Nam. Um, you know the the I think it's National Association of Music mm-hmm. um, convention. Where it was a bunch of funk drummers and drummers basically of, of every caliber, and Bernard Purdy just happened to be sitting next to him, and I was like, "What did he say to you? What did, what did he do?" And he's just like, "You know, I don't remember the most. Most of what I remember is him smiling at me." Oh. And like you know, we shook hands, you know, like just you know, exchange hellos and stuff. But he he just was like bubbly, bubbly, mm-hmm. smiley, and just basically on every, every video you've ever seen of him doing the shuffle and basically everything smiley. else. He's Happy smiling. He's, ah, mm, mm, ooh, ah, ee, ah. It was great. <laughs> That's so, so uh, a little anecdote for this uh, for this podcast. Uh, it's super cool to to be among high caliber musicians mm-hmm. like that because I even because like I'm such a blue collar musician. I I tried to see if I could like play with them mm-hmm. and not necessarily play music, but like play up to their caliber in in, in terms of what what they could talk about musically. So I was like I was like, hey Jason, would you write a shuffle in cut time? <laughs> As if, like, I know what that means, kind of. <laughs> and he's like, good question, actually. <laughs> and he goes to his friend, uh, who happens to be named Jason as well, <laughs> uh, Doctor at Music. He's like, hey, Jason, w- would you would you write a, would you write a shuffle in cut time? And he's like, no, nah, I think it'd be, no, nah, I think it'd be in 4-4. Four, four. I think it'd be in 4-4 four, four because, you know, if you get the, and, and I started doing it, I'm like, okay, so is, is it the ah, ooh, ee, ee, ooh, ah? <laughs> and they they seem to they seem to be enjoyed by that, but I, I, I you know I don't know if it was like a misspeak by me, but I think it, it started a conversation among high caliber musicians, and I was like, oh, that wasn't actually a, a wrong question to ask because Jason Lee Bruns didn't even know, <laughs> or you know, or wanted mm-hmm. to uh, float the idea to uh, Mister Other Mister Other Jason. <laughs> Love it. Um, so yeah, that was a fun night last night. Um, Jason Lee Bruns. If you haven't heard of him, look up BrunsCollective.com, Bruns Beats on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy is um, been doing it for 10 years plus. Um, also last night, Andy Garcia, who plays uh, uh, Benedict in Ocean's 11, Ocean's mm-hmm. 12 and the others, played um, uh, bonga, bong, uh, uh, bongos, not congas, not bongas. Bongas. Bongas, oh boy. <laughs> But uh, yes, they played a, a Caribbean uh, Cuban rhythm mm-hmm. uh, with Andy Garcia, who mm-hmm. made made an appearance on the stage. So not only the guy is uh, surrounds himself with high caliber musicians, but high caliber actors too. <laughs> That's Jason Lee Bruns. Look him up, uh, BrunsCollective.com, Bruns Beats on Instagram. He is <laughs> incredible. Look him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Back to Joey Dosick. Yeah. Yeah. So um, also he uh became a member of the ann arbor electro pop funk group my dear disco which we <laughs> talked about in um, oh, Joey theo's, too. in uh in in theo's uh background story here so um yeah he appeared in, on their 28 28- 2008 dance think lp which included a cover of stevie wonder's all i do among the group's other members were dosick's roommate multi-instrument instrumentalist theo katzman and bass player uh, joe dart do you think calling i mean i said this in the theo cast but do you think calling theo katzman a multi-instrumentalist says less than says more about him 
I think that's awfully like pigeonholing him. Yeah. Because like, yeah, he's also he is a singer songwriter. But not only is he multi instrumentalist, it's like that's kind of saying like um, master of none. What is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you're good at everything, but not good at everything. Or, you're okay at everything, but not great at one right, thing. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know the the saying. Danny Wood, thanks. Get us get us that saying. But uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we rely on Danny Wood here in the Conscious Club podcast. But I think, <laughs> um, but I think multi multi instrumentalist as it is correct, mm-hmm. I think is also as incorrect as it is correct. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What I think about that. So I'm hoping that um, I have a clip that actually shows uh, Woody this time, unlike my Theo one where I thought he was in it and it actually wasn't him. It was just someone who kind of looked like him. But I think Joey is in this video. Oh, okay. Um, so this is My Dear Disco. And I believe I made a note that he was jamming with a stash on the keyboards here. So let's Got see it. if we can find him. It, it is. Um, it's not copyrighted. It is copyrighted. It is? Yeah. Where? In the description. Yeah, those things. Oh. So we'll find it. Uh, there he ooh. is. Ooh. Hold on. There he is. That is him. Is that? Oh. That's Joey. Oh, that is Joey. Mr. D-Man. Or we can go. We can we can slow it down. We'll speed it uh, to a quarter here. Right here. Right after this, yeah. <laughs> There uh, he is. Wow, he almost looks like Joe Dart. A little bit, yeah. He has it, a mustache. You know, you know it, it is technically a mustache, or maybe even goatee even, but I don't think that's by design. I think that's just like He fuzz didn't have grown. time to... Or like, not have time, but it's just like, you're young, you don't shave, mm-hmm. and it just grows, it just grows in. <laughs> this guy's tongue is Gross. odd. But, yeah. I wonder if we have... Um, if we have a clip that's not uh, copywritten in some way. Yeah, I don't think so, unfortunately. Bring on the Conscious Club podcast to some rocks, yeah. No rocks. I at least got a clip with the actual person in it this time, unlike in the Theo one where <laughs> hey, we realized hey, it wasn't even about, him. Yeah, no, we're, we're way ahead of where we were last time. Oh, good grace, gracious. Good so, grace. Good grace. So, um... Then, um, after he was with uh, Ella Riot, who uh, came to be known as uh, My Dear Disco, um, he completed his BFA in 20, 2008, and in tw- 2009, he re- relocated back to LA, where Katzman and Dart went on to form Wolfpack and the two other music majors, Jack Stratton, with the... I can't talk today. I, I apologize. That's completely fine. With the two other music majors, Jack and We're only Jack doing a podcast. Woody. That's fine. <laughs> I don't mean that as a, in a bad way. It's, I mean I meant it more as a joke. For some reason I, I can't talk today. That's okay. But, We're um, only doing a podcast. Okay. <laughs> so um, then Dosik released his first solo EP, um, Where Do They Come From, in 2012. So let's take it. And th- this EP is called Where Do They Come From. I love how they they uh, they ri- they wrote that as if Katzman and, and Dosik formed Wolfpack themselves. I know, right? Come on, yo. Where's that Jack no, Stratton? No, 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 no. Dart and Katzman went on to Dart Wolfpack. and Katzman. Yeah, yeah. Not ah. Joey. They don't even put Joey in that. They're like, Joey's poop yeah. because he oh. didn't go on to form Wolfpack, even though he's a huge part of Wolfpack. He's a signature sound of Wolfpack. Yeah. It's, it sucks how there there is a distinction between the ancillary members. Yeah. Cause like Which even, is weird because I, I find Antoine to be like one of the best parts of Wolfpack, even though he's technically ancillary. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. Corey, too. I think also, yeah, yeah, it's weird how like they bring such a unique spin to the Wolf sound that that they're considered ancillary, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I guess. Well, they're not the core four. I the guess. core four. I, I, it's interesting because like Jason Lee Bruns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to a Jason Lee Bruns analogy. His band is called the Bruns Collective, and I don't think there's been two shows that I've seen, and I've seen probably 10 or 12 of them so far. I don't think there's been a single show with the same members playing live Mm. ever. So it's like the crux of the band is that you can find a high caliber musician to fill in in case somebody else can't go, right? Like um, last show I saw at uh, with with Jason Lee Bruns, 
Mr. Livingston was playing bass, but this time he had a brand new guy who never played with him before mm-hmm. and was great. It was awesome. But that's so, not necessarily Wolfpack. No, but I'm saying it's like Jason is, is bringing in... It's They're not ancillary members. It's just mm-hmm. the Bruns Collect. Right. Right. Yeah. Whereas we could just call them Wolfpack and then Joey just happens to be on the song. Right. Right. Yeah. But he's but, more than that. Yeah. But they're often referred to as the ancillary members, which I'm, I'm sure we helped push more than anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right. It's probably our own worst enemy there. But yeah. yeah. So let's take a quick listen to his first solo EP. Where did they come from in uh, that he released in 2012? This guy. Hmm. These words are written from memory. It was cute, huh? It almost sounds like it was written by Theo. It's got a Theo songwriting. It does have a Theo vibe, yeah. Theo could have helped him on it. And Joey's singing. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Where do they come from? That almost sounds like the Muscle Shoals. Mm. Like it's that like great American rock sound. Yeah. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. It's good, huh? It's fun. Been riding hooks at the grocery store. Looking hits for show. To nourish me deeply. I love jamming this guy. I love anything Wolfpack, man. I know. Anything Wolfpack, if it's in my life, like, I'm sure even for you listeners out there, the fact that. I think my love for Wolfpack outweighs how much I suck at piano. Mm-hmm. So I guess people are willing to listen to it. <laughs> um, I would like to think that. <laughs> but great track. This is an incredible track, this track. Yeah, right? It's and if, great. If you guys are wondering, I just use a literary device called Inversion. Oh, no. Here we go. You may uh, look that up on Spotify, Apple Music. MC Lynchpit. <sighs> Help me. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless it's the new, um, it's the new B Nornish, by the way. DJ B Nornish. That is a claim. It isn't. <clears throat> My caliber is way low. Like, I'd be like a <laughs> nine millimeter, mm-hmm. but uh, DJ B Nornish would be a 50 cal. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, where did they come from? Joey Dosick and Theo Katzman. And uh, that's his first solo EP yeah, release, right? First solo EP. Yeah. Incredible. That, and that song is just so fun. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's great. Great song, that song. Yeah. And so then um, after this, uh, he starts working on his um, game winner and on his mm. first full length solo debut, Inside Voice. And um, then uh, in the meantime, Secretly Canadian added Dosic to his roster. Mm. And um, interesting. Yeah. And so he. Um, stuck with the warm retro soul sound and he had guest musicians such as Katzman, Maki and Moses Sumney on uh, That's his That's so cool. You know, I heard on the third story podcast with, with Joey Dosick um, that the game winner EP was made in smack dab in the middle of re- uh, recording and, and producing Inside Voice. Mm. It was Inside, supposedly Inside Voice was taking so long to produce Mm -hmm. that he was kind of it was kind of getting stale i mean i'm paraphrasing here but um supposedly that he was getting really stale with inside voice like because supposedly the album was created over the course of 10 years roughly Mm -hmm. 10 years which is a really long time to produce 13 songs right um but supposedly in the third story podcast he talks about he he just wanted to get something out before the album that wasn't the album yeah um and it just so happens that game winner kind of captivated in terms of like the the um 
like the likeness of Jack Stratton, right? Mm -hmm. Where he goes like, whoa, what the hell is this? I love the mm -hmm. songwriting. This is great. And this is, this is also an ancillary product yeah. of something else he's working yeah. on. And it's like, if that's good, fucking A, man. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Cause like, even, even though the, like the, the underrated tracks on that album, like, um, the day before, I think it's called or whatever the, the songs with the dot, dot, dots in them. Great, great, incredible songs mm -hmm. that are often overlooked, but then you hit game winner and it's, it's, game winner. And it's just that it's just that. <laughs> Um, but super interesting how, how secretly Canadian picked him up that yeah, early. Yeah. Right. And I put a link to their like website just cause it's interesting how many people they have that they, uh, hmm. represent here. Um, and yeah, they have like their own like new section of stuff that's going on and they like feature all their artists their live shows their videos blah 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 That's cool secretly canadian so let's find joey here um <laughs> oh boy okay ah mr joey d there he is Ooh. that's great i wonder yes i wonder it's interesting because like it's it it seems oddly a right place for joey to be Mm -hmm. In in a weird way where it's like, why was Joey picked up onto a major or rough, a roughly major label or more, more uh, institutional label than the rest of the people involved? Well, it says here, Quincy Jones named him as an artist to watch. So that'll do it. That'll do it. But I, I definitely think that seems right out of all the ancillary members mm -hmm. that dosic has the traditional label route mm -hmm. like he seems like you know uh, uh a jewish marvin gay you know what i mean like <laughs> i love it <laughs> i love that right <laughs> so yeah they have this it says right here a melancholy marvin gay style ah plaint that balances hope with despair forget it right mm. that mm. is that is great take mine plays uh, the song Take Mine plays with negative space to heighten drama surrounding a rep repetitive gut-punching gut -punching melody. melody. What feels like a song, what feels like a love song is actually a plea for unity against turbulent backdrop of present day politics. Mm. Well, isn't that mm. an enticing description of Joey Dosick's music? Yeah. Hmm. So interesting. They have so much uh, information on him here. Right. It's a long, long bio here. Jeez. But um. But to simply nod at the record's craftsmanship misses the, the point. point. Inside Voice <laughs> is a record that both honors and transcends its references, challenging the constraints of genre. It's brimming with emotions that can, that can lift you up or break your heart. It's catchy as hell and <laughs> will haunt you for days. You can take a casual pass at it or spend hours listening to it on repeat. Either way, Inside Voice will get to you because Joey Dosick writes human music for human <laughs> beings and a boy. And boy, boy does, he, does write he write the, the hell, hell out of it. it. That is super true. I think like he's a... He's, uh, Although I think it's interesting because like comparing him to Theo and mm -hmm. which I don't think is, is a fair comparison. Um, it's interesting how Theo kind of approaches songwriting in a more technical way, mm -hmm. whereas Joey does it in a more emotional way mm -hmm. and more um, now controversial statements here on the Conscious Club podcast. I'm, I definitely think there's some Theo songs that are emotionally driven than technically driven and the same opposite for Joey. But mm -hmm. I think... It's it's their approach to it, right? Um, it seems like Joey wants to conquer more visceral, emotional, mm -hmm. um, like like almost as if how a mo how a movie score can move you without words. Yeah, um, I think J Joey kind of has that that vibe to him. Yeah. I hundred percent agree. He's but, tackling. Um, um, I, I hate to say that Wolfpack music doesn't doesn't have an, an emotional appeal because some of it definitely does, but there's something about Joey's music that is so much more emotional and it tackles big, bigger subjects and bigger issues. And, um, it's really more, I find it to be more emotionally like moving maybe yeah. more than Volfec music. Cause Volfec music, 
it's kind of like about escaping it. It's like kind of about like escaping right, what's a, going on. It's a Steely on. Dan ish route where it's it's like trying to mock things or or it has an agenda of some sort not in a, not in a negative way but mm-hmm. it, it has an agenda in in terms of we're trying to learn something here from mm-hmm. the song we're trying to we're trying to be esoteric we're mm-hmm. trying to be um ephemeral mm-hmm. um you know eclectic uh i think it's more wolfpack is more on the oddities of this type of music mm-hmm. and that you know, it, th- which inherently makes it more weird, right? There's a right. weird aspect of Wolfpack that Joey definitely does not have, you know, mm-hmm. n- not, not in a bad way. I'm just saying like he contributes the heart and soul to Wolfpack, I think more than the rest. Right. And especially Theo as well. I would say right. he, when, when Wolfpack has like a, an emotional song or a song that, uh, hits a chord i would say it's because theo has a hand in in writing on it right yeah yeah i definitely think that too yeah so yeah that's interesting to me it's interesting to compare the two songwriters because they're both in their own ways Mm -hmm. just gods Mm -hmm. you know so there's you know none of them are better than the other but they're both incredibly awesome so yeah yeah i have three old throwback joey videos so uh, this is from the, so the full future. Uh, so sorry that we couldn't be in Detroit for your simcha. <laughs> we send you all of the shtick. our love and, and lots of nachas to the kindlech. Hey, baby, what you know and Jack about? plays the fridge. <laughs> I love it. I'm just getting back, but you knew I would. Heavily compressed, huh? Mm-hmm. When will it end? Close mic that fridge. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I think it's this mic too. You got an SM57 <laughs> on there. That's dope. dope. You can really do make great music with anything, man. Mm-hmm. Talk about low volume. Yeah, Funk I love. I love just how gentle you can be. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jack is just like, because that's the thing. Because like, I, I definitely like associate. Because like, when I used to play drums and stuff, you know, like when I had mm-hmm. a set and everything, like your first instinct is just to pound as hard as you can, yeah. you know, and just like. But like, I think the best music, the best drummers, like even Jason Lee Bruns, restraint. It's all restraint, right? And it's, it's all, I think it all has to do with the music surrounding what you're playing on drums Mm -hmm. because like you can't play a jazz beat with like metal guitars because you're never going to hear the hi-hat as the snare, right? Because like a lot of the times the snare is the hi-hat in jazz and the hi-hat is now the snare in jazz Mm -hmm. because it's quiet. It's quiet. It's, 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 (laughs) but, and then. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's just it's just you know and this is the layman talking about Restraint. a non-drummer talking about drummership but yeah incredible so anyways i thought that that was great and it's cool because like it's a nod to what joey's doing now because like he does a cover of what's happening brother right in his live shows yeah at the end so compressed though so compressed but i have two more clips fun times here Let's do it. Baby Joey. A little dry, huh? Mm-hmm. I like it. It sounds like he's just far enough out of reach mm-hmm. in time. Not not in time in the music, but like, seems like he's in the 60s. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, and it's like a bad That was recording. the whole intent. Yeah, right, right. That's why they do the, the effect over right. the video, too. Yeah. Like it's on film. <laughs> they should shoot an actual video on film. Like, no. just one. They should have done their MSG show on film. Eh, I think uh, 
I think the financial independence True. part of that, the FIFA foot bomb, That's allows true. for that to never happen ever. True. <laughs> they could at least do a live recording like this on phone though. Not right. Cool. I think like just just uh, a regular. I think a, Vol- a Wolfpack song that would make the most sense in doing it on film. Mm-hmm. They that'd be great to do. That'd be really cool. Yeah, definitely. So I have one more here of a throwback of Mr. Joey Dawson. Mm. Ah. <laughs> this is like the IGF one days. Literally. Where they're like screw stands or on the ground. Yeah. And this is the Sleepify video mm-hmm. room. Yeah. God, this is good lord, this is gonna be flagged for sexual content. Mm. I love that. <laughs> love that Wolf Compressor just just wavering. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> little wolf fire, little wolf compressor fire. So yeah, I thought that these were really cute to show yeah, on his uh, right. his background thing. Um, let's see if I'm able to show this one. Ooh. Let's see. Keyscape, huh? I think I should be fine, right? You're fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So should this be. one I thought was cool. This was for a um, a company had him come in. And play on his uh, on their keyboards. This is so cool. Anyways, I thought it was funny because they get so close in this video. They just continue to zoom in, and it's and so I marked it as uh, getting close up with the uh, Joey Dasik here. They get so close on like his hands and his face. It's great. It's so funny. They show every pore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, wearing his jersey. <laughs> Sing it. Thinking about me, baby. It's so close up. Good gaffing, though. Solid gaffing. Yeah, they do some cool shots in here. Look at this. How close on his hands they got. Literally got. looks like stock footage. Literally <laughs> stock footage. <laughs> they could sell a lot of this a lot of this these close ups to Pawn Five. I <laughs> definitely could, especially <laughs> yeah. the hand shots. Yeah. In case you need a uh, B roll of a guy in a Lakers jersey playing a piano. Correct. Got, See look, uh, this one yeah. too. It's literally it looks like, like an B-roll. Apple commercial. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Love it. It's gone. So yeah, I thought that this was funny. Like beautiful. It's they just get so up in his grill. Like it just made my day. Yeah. Um, this is really cool. He did the national anthem at MSG before they played MSG, and I thought that this what? was really cool. Yeah. Joey Dawson. It's so cool. Yeah. Did he almost do a game winner intro? Yeah, literally. Did he do game the winner. game winner intro? He literally does. I'm pretty sure. Songwriter and game winner records recording artist Joey Dawson. <laughs> I love him. Give me the ball. <laughs> I love he brought the whirly too. I know, so great. Take the hat off and respect. Yep. Bless.
Blazy. Blazer. I'd be too. Projecting this guy. <laughs> I saw that this is actually on here too. South by, huh? Oh, this one I thought I, that I thought was cool because I think it's an acapella. Oh wait, no. It's just bass. Yeah. This I thought was pretty cool. He has to try to figure out the. Uh, first chord <laughs> I love it maybe I should like I don't know practice more maybe maybe eh. oh, well. eh, no nah. <laughs> um, so I do want to talk about this cool Q&A that occurred um, mm. it is with the Atwood magazine and um, exploring a new frontier a conversation with Joey Dosick I picked just a few things here to talk about from this uh, great from this uh, wonderfully um, uh, put together uh, article here and Q&A. Um, so I thought this was cool. It says, when you are collaborating with other artists and bands like Wolfpack, what sort of mindset are you in compared to when you're working on solo um, material? And he said, it's all about being part of a team when it's just me, but I just happen to be the coach and the point guard and the guy selling concessions. But with something like Wolfpack, I get to fulfill whatever role I'm in. Like if I'm playing keys on the track or saxophone, I'm there to listen to a mix and think, wow, that's amazing. There's a leader. There's a leader to the band who's Jack. And then there's my role. And I think it's important to know your role and to help execute it with the team and to put in the best possible position to succeed. Uh, we have some Corey Wong mm -hmm. similarities. Similarities here. when talking about their role. You know, you can't. Yeah, you, yeah, you really can't be like um, a, a, a musician of this caliber without operating that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I, I use Jason Lee Bruns as, as an example for most things music related, mm -hmm. but this is the, the it's the crux of his band too. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure he's. You know, uh, I'm sure musicians um, uh, have a tough time uh, switching gears like yeah. that. You know, where it's mm -hmm. like. You know, maybe you're you're doing a solo album, and then you get asked to be on a you know uh, track on a band mm -hmm. with a band or whatever. It's being able to turn off that ego and go, 
what what can I bring to the table that is, isn't just me? It's not just me. It's Mm-mm. what I'm it, I'm fulfilling. A what role can I con- contribute to the right. team? And yeah. I think definitely like saying that you have to know your role is sometimes like a like a uh, something that doesn't get said a lot now. Mm-hmm. And I think like if you know your role, that seems like a bad thing mm-hmm. in today's lexicon or whatever. But I think it's it's it's. It, it's just so needed yeah you know you you, you can't be fighting egos when mm-hmm. jack's the leader of the band he's he says what goes you're just lucky to even be a part of it right yeah and then when when you're on your own time that's that's when you can do whatever the hell you want yeah yeah very cool yeah shall so, i do the second one yeah Ms. absolutely Papa? please do all right so uh next question um more than just wolfpack you work a lot with maki nia andrews and others as well how has working with them influenced your work and joey replies oh my god i have been influenced by them in so many ways we used to have this jam session we do once a month at the ace hotel in la at the rooftop and you know we we'd all play together we'd all play each other songs and we make stuff up on the spot and i can't see the rest of the time no 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 it's fine uh We'd, we'd all play each other's songs and we'd make stuff up on the spot. And I've just been so influenced by that and by my community as well. I've been so lucky to have been surrounded by amazing performers and songwriters. So helpful. Super cool. So this is just a sample of how he works with like his friends and stuff. He's through this whole video. You'll see him here. Hmm. So this is... Hmm, conveyor belt sushi. Oh my god, I want that so bad right now. I want it. This is great. So isn't this Incredible. great? Yeah, the this is just some of the stuff that he does with his friends, and I thought that, that was cool to show. That's super super cool. Um That's that's awesome. I I don't listen to enough Maki. I needed to I need to dive into some Maki. I know, because it might sure. be an interesting video for us to uh Right. Do you do a deep dive into his music? And do oh, there'll be a podcast on Maki for sure because yeah, we my list. are running out of ideas. Hey, I'm just, not. I'm just, I am full I'm, of ideas. We are not anywhere near the end of this podcast. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll change the battery. Sounds good. We'll, cut. we'll be right back on the Couch we'll Club Podcast. We'll be right back. We will be right back on the Couch Club Podcast. <laughs> and welcome back to the Couch Club Podcast, <laughs> the Joey Dosick edition. Um, <laughs> We are back and we are in zone two and we're doing it. So uh, what do we got next? Last question of the Q&A that we were talking about ah, here. Q&A, yes. So this is a very similar question to a question that we talked about in the Corey Wong uh, episode. Ah. Um, and it they asked him about the difference between crowds in the UK versus the ones in the US. And mm. Joey says... I do actually find a difference. Each country has a different flavor and feels different. And to a certain extent, each city in the U.S. is like that, too. I think in Europe, some countries are more reserved. But for the most part, I feel that they wear their their hearts on their sleeves and are looser and a bit rowdier than in the States. Another big thing is that the food spreads in Europe are more on point. Laughs. Finer bread, cheeses and wine, all that stuff. So it's, it's, interesting it's, we got a plethora of uh we got a whole bevy yeah so it's kind of like how here. Corey answered that question like a little bit looser um wear the heart on their sleeves like he said that they they could pick up on the music uh the small nuances of music more Corey said and when he answered the right. question right Ah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's like they're more musically competent. Not not that Americans aren't, but mm-hmm. more so in yeah. in Europe, yeah. Makes sense too because like they come from like this right. this classical music like bubbling like Right. place art. It's where art it's heavy, like yeah. And yeah. we have the it's like the standard American diet of music. <laughs> yeah, right? which is like country, western, <laughs> cowboys no, it's, it's about, and it's banjos. About and... having fun and getting fucked up. Yeah, mostly yeah, yeah. in america you know it's like you know most of the money made at shows is from alcohol yeah you know? so unfortunately. it's like uh and I'm, it's probably the same in, in europe but it's probably you know yeah he did say that they're a bit rowdier than in the states right. actually interesting interesting yeah yeah that's interesting so change my stance <laughs> so anyways i just wanted to rep <laughs> joey's merch shop on his website uh shop.joeydosick.com um, because he still does have a lot of cool uh, merch up, as well as these really cool enamel pins. He has a meatball pin ah. and a clam pin. Let me turn off the dark reader. Oh, sorry, thank you. sorry for no that. No worries. 
There you go. Oh, yeah. He has this really cute clam pin, meatball pin, inside voice pin, mm. take mine pins, game winner pins. Aww. And then he has his socks, of course. Um, and so, yeah, go Love support uh, Corey and his merch as well as Joey. You, Joey and his merch. Sorry, we were just talking about Corey Wong. I That's apologize. Um, so, yeah, go support his merch shop um, and look at his tour dates on his website and everything. Right. So, yeah. Now and this brings us to funny this funk. This brings us to ah. the most fun part of the show, which is funny funk. And it's a little bit of a, of a short funny funk this week, but um, yeah, it's it's just a, a it. few little things here. Great. So. You can just use the the space bar booby. Oh, sorry. That's fine. It's just easier. You gotta have it selecty. There we go. Yep. Cool. So this. Oops. I highly apologize. <gasps> Menzi. Okay. There we go. Okay, thanks. There we go. So this is a clip taken at MSG, which I don't know if he's shown on the podcast <laughs> yet, but I've definitely put it on our Instagram many a time because I absolutely love it. Um at the Conscious Club Podcast. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. It's uh Joey with his uh the binoculars from the set, so I loved that. <laughs> um this is oh. a cute picture which I have not memed up yet. Huh. I've not memed this one up yet. However, okay, so there's two Bird and Joey photos that I have found so far. There was one with like this like pigeony dove thing, which I have memefied. Uh, and and the then wo- I the Woody, the yeah. Woody, and I found this one, the owl one. So I am going to be memeing this one soon for the uh, Instagram. So is this another Woody face? It and will then be. and then yeah. it's it's uh, the caption on under Joey would be uh, when you realize what uh, when you realize that. You should have been bird. No, no. <laughs> when you realize you, when you realize that bird watching inherently helps you musically, I don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll like, work on the caption. Yeah, the amount of time Woody has spent bird watching makes him a better. Maybe. I don't. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We. You'll see it on. We the, need you'll to see it on the a, Instagram. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Funny funk. Love it. So uh, next. This is a cute pic <laughs> of him from Instagram. Crotch funk, baby. Crotch funk. Mr. Shane Walsh coming in hot here. In his 90s basketball shoes and, of course, <laughs> his uh, overalls. Yes. I so love that. The classic overalls, which has become more of a, uh, a signature. Uh, love it. Joey he has, thing. He has his jean ones and then he has the black uh, the snow, snow suit. ones. Yeah, the snowsuit yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. So these are his casuals. Yeah. The jean is like the casual, right. and then he has his fancy s- snow pants. And I love how he even gives the details of when he's opening one one one, one of the uh, the shoulder straps is off, but mm-hmm. when he's with Wolfpack, both are on. Correct. So it's the, it's the small things. It's the small and details that matter. Yeah. So the next thing was really funny. I found out on Joey's face on Joey the group for Joey. You know the goodest boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the the nicest guy. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. This so this person named Ari shared um, a uh, bring Wolfpack to Israel. Yeah, it's a petition. Yeah. That's great. He created a page. Bring Wolfpack to Israel. I, I definitely think there would over time you can get enough funds to get them over there. I think that would be great. definitely that'd yeah. be really cool. Um, bring them to Israel, y'all. Let's do this. And I love the Homeland. and this reminded me of the post from the Wolfpack where it was like uh, MSG is just a pregame for Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah <laughs> was a Monday after MSG. Yeah, I remember that love funny that. from a previous podcast. Love that. Um, this okay, <laughs> this was shared by Joey on his. Uh, his Instagram stories. His dad sent him this. Whoa. Is that his dad? No, this is Joey. Oh, man. And his dad sent him this trolling him of what he used to look like. God, <laughs> it looks like what he will look like in 30 years. I know. He almost looks older with this hair, doesn't it literally, he? Yeah. It looks like a beetle. It, it, it's either his dad from 30 years ago no, or him, him in 30 years from now. It's him because his mom started trolling him after this. Oh? Oh, my gosh. And she said... Can you believe that this is what you you what you looked like? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And he just says, lol, thanks. Interesting. Thanks, mom. Interesting. Yeah, his parents are savages. He he does have the Jack look. He really He's got does. the Corey shirt with the Jack beard or the mushy beard. And uh, interesting. No connection to the mustache and that little patch on the lip and right. then around. It's literally, you know. Um, huh. Uh, Amish people. The Amish people have uh, that circle beard. Yeah, it's literally it's the football that. Strap, it's literally right? football that. Yeah, strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's got the mustache. <laughs> I guess you can't have a mustache when you're Amish. You grew up in Michigan, so you'd probably know. Yeah, they don't have this part. 
It's just the beard. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. God was like, mustache equals hell. <laughs> just, just the strap. Too many bad people have ruined the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's interesting. He he does. He he looks so different, clean shaven. I know. You know. I didn't even know retro. he was Jewish, clean shaven. You know, for the longest <laughs> while. I know, right? It's crazy. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah. I'm I'm interested. Interested and interesting. Yeah. Here on the Conscious Club podcast. Here on the Conscious Club podcast. Was that round out funny fun? That rounds out funny. All right. Fun. So I guess we have only left to do the tag. Is the Wolf tag? <laughs> and I can, I have a... <laughs> We're off the rail. No, 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 no. He's pulling them together. He's pulling them together. Something about her. I, I'm terrible. How, how good would you feel one day if we ever had Joey on the podcast and he graced this keyboard with his fingers? Oh, he will. How good would that make you feel? No, this this is somewhat of a goal of the podcast. We just, you know, we want to talk to them. You know, I want to talk to them. want to get them on the show. want to do some stuff. Um, we have a ways to get there, mm-hmm. but uh, it's definitely doable, especially yeah. here. We live in L.A. Joey lives in L.A. Jack lives, lives in L.A. LA. Theo um, lives in L.A. Theo lives in L.A. Um, it's just a matter of, I think, us nailing down the format, mm-hmm. uh, having somewhat of a following, and then Jack giving us the nod. Yeah. 100%. You know, because if, <laughs> let's put it this way, if Corey Wong go on at, if the Corey Jack Wong, gesture, we the, should say. The Jack gesture, yes. Mm-hmm. If Corey Wong can go on Andy Frasco's crap podcast, mm-hmm. sorry. I know he's a great musician. No video format even but, on that. Right. Yeah. And, and we're, we're bringing a yeah. product to the people. We're bringing podcast to market. We're bringing podcast to platform. Podcast so, to platform. But, but we're, we, we, we are trying to get noticed by the full <laughs> people we just want to talk to them i think it'd be fun um because i think we we have an, an innately different um approach to mm-hmm. interviewing these people because you know we're not scholastic musicians we're not like trying to unearth these uh, Music musical secrets. nuance secrets whatever we just want to know like dude is Swampers for Survival 2.0 or not? Did you <laughs> did you approach Swampers? Is there any connection as a direct mind? reaction from what the pack did? Because you know this is what we want to get towards. You mm-hmm. know, I want to know the relationship between Jack and and Dean Ornish. Yeah, I want to know who, who specifically got him on that train. Right, right, exactly, and how it started. Wolf Lit, which is now lit.wolf.de or something like that mm-hmm. um but you know this is what we're our goal is <laughs> you know we have multiple goals here on mm-hmm. the on the country club podcast we we want to become wolf admins mm-hmm. <laughs> that's another <laughs> that's that's a goal because i i could moderate like hell y'all um and we want to be i mean the, we oh, are the auditors of we're, the wolf we're pack. the auditor with the irs of the wolf pack yeah, yeah. uh oh we i forgot to add to the intro oh. card there sorry so oh, yeah good. We, yeah the scotch club podcast we are the auditors we are the irs of the wolf pack um we long to be an admin of the wolf pack <laughs> we long to open for the openers at a wolf show i think it'd be <laughs> super cool as people get to their seats we can have an interactive podcast live at a wolf pack show with all y'all we can have danny wood We'll fly him out. We'll do, we'll do it. I think Red Rocks 2020. You never know. There could be a, a ready, podcast opener. And, you know, whatever. Danny but. could be our guest at the openers for the openers. Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. That'd be that'd be completely awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is the uh, Conscious Club podcast. This was the Joey Dasik edition of the Conscious Club yes. podcast. Um, thank you guys for listening. And, um, we'll have more deep dives in the future. We will. We will. Um, thank you for listening. Peace out, y'all.
everybody, Indy here, and thanks for watching the Conscious Club Podcast. Please be advised that this is a fan-made podcast. Even though we would love nothing more, we are not associated with Wolfpack, Wolf Records, LLC, Wolf Productions, Inc., or any associated acts tied to the greater Wolf Umbrella. We do this show out of love, not for monetary gain. We simply wanted an outlet like this to exist, so we made it happen, and I hope that's okay. Thanks for watching, and always remember, fee fi fo fum.